Tom, welcome. Hello. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being here. Hannah. Thank you. Thank you. We are all so very excited to have you. Um, you just got here yesterday, right? So, and this is your 11th time visiting Korea. Tell us how it feels this time. That feels amazing. Every time I come, I just feel very welcomed and warm. And the other night uh, when we arrived, I went out and of course I had to have uh, Korean barbecue. Mm. So I went to a great place, great restaurant, and then just walked around and said hello to everyone uh, around the area. It was, it's been really lovely. That's wonderful. It's been very special. Especially during this time because making the film with this cast, to have them here, uh, we're all very excited about tonight to present the film to everyone. And we talk about these moments and what it's like to come to this country and be here. So it's very special. That's it's always very to special to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Well, so I want to start off by asking you, you know, it's incredible to see your filmmaking accomplishments over the year, I mean, to say the least, over your career. And so we want to know what motivates you to continue making movies. You know, I, I just have an absolute passion for storytelling. Um, it's something that I've wanted to do since I was four years old, uh, make movies and I wanted to travel the world. You know, when you see my films, it's... Uh, really encompasses a whole life. I've spent most of my life in rented houses and hotels, and I always wanted an adventurous life, and it's something that uh, I feel very privileged to be able to do it. And I, it is a passion for life, a passion for storytelling. You know, I never went to a formal education for film or acting. I've studied it. I was lucky the first films that I auditioned for I got since I was 18. And I would go and I'd studied every single department on the film. Um, and I just studied it and studied it. And that's what I, I did on every single movie. And I, I grew up watching films. I, I had jobs cutting grass or, you know, all kinds of jobs. I had a lot of odd jobs where I'd just go up and shovel snow out of people's driveways to make money. And then I would go to the movies. And so then when I was 18 years old, I went to New York. And I started auditioning for films. And actually, the first film I auditioned for, I got. And the next film I auditioned for, I got the role. But I would also, as a kid, I would write characters and create skits. And I would create different kinds of characters to entertain my family or friends. So there was always that storyteller that, uh, that was there yeah, in me. Thank you. And with every new mission film, you know, it's so obvious that you always raise the bar. So could you tell us how have you made Dead Reckoning Part 1 your biggest mission film yet? Well, it was really Christopher McQuarrie, uh, who you'll, he'll come out shortly. Uh, he came and he said, I said, do you want to do another one? He said, sure. And he said, I want to do two movies because always the stories that we have, the, the film is so big and the stories are so vast that, that he said, let's do two. So I said, okay, let's, let's break it off into two. And then we just go back and forth on the kind of environment that we want. If you look at my films, they celebrate cultures and geography. Uh, and that's Mission Impossible, which was the very first film the first Mission Impossible was the first film that I ever produced. And now here we are all these years later. So that, that's what happened, essentially. We, we come up and look at geography, and we're looking at, uh, you know, what, what's that story going to tell us? So that's, and also we wanted, when you look at, at this mission, what it's, what it's encompassing, the kind of, I also felt that the whole series could, uh, earn this moment, earn this level of scale of storytelling and scale of action. And not just for my character, but for the entire cast. And speaking of scale, we cannot not talk about the amazing stunts. And so we all saw the incredible motorcycle jump. How much work does it go into pulling something off like that? I mean, we can't imagine. Yeah. It's, you know, doing a stunt like that, it was, it's also, we're both focused, McHugh and I are focused on story. What story we're going to tell? Uh, finding, you look, I've, I, I fly airplanes, helicopters, uh, jets, uh, warbirds. I parachute. I, you'll see. I guess we're going to show speed flying that I do, and um, so there, it's really decades of ability that is then focused to be able to do something like this. So. I broke this, you know, and what I do is I'll break things down so that I'm, I'm very 
competent, capable at it, so that I, we had to really figure out, had to train, do extra training and parachuting and, you know, unstable positions at very low altitudes so that I would recover quickly. Uh, train, just more training on motorcycles. I've driven, ridden motorcycles since I was a kid and jumped and stuff, so, but never off a ramp and off a cliff in Norway. And McHugh and I, we had to, you know, we found the place and something that's incredibly visual. Uh, he's a very elegant storyteller, Christopher McCory, and has an amazing eye, so it's finding that location. And then essentially looking and building the ramp. So all of these pieces came together, and I just, I said it, I broke it up into pieces of, because when I'm, when I'm doing the jump, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I only have a few seconds before I have to open the parachute. And you can see on the internet, the longer version, when I, I'm testing, when I'm jumping out of the helicopter and I'm testing, because I'm going down into a bowl, and there's all kinds of turbulence there. And I'm a, you can see I'm a little, I opened a little just shoulder high, just very subtle. And as I opened, it turned me, the parachute, it turned me into the side of the cliff. So you can see I open and it goes into the side of the cliff. I recovered. But those are the things that I have to worry about as I'm going across the ramp. I'm worried about that helicopter coming across and blowing me off the ramp before I get to the end of it. Um, once I depart the ramp, it's also the separation from the motorcycle and for, to keep my body in a position where I'm not going to go into a tumble. I then have to hold on long enough so that all the cameras can catch me falling, and then I have to open, obviously, before I hit the ground, and then don't hit the side of the mountain and try to make it back, <laughs> try to make it back. And so all of these things, I'm, I'm also, at the beginning, it's all one shot, and so it's, I'm performing, I'm acting and thinking about, about story and character. So, but I'm also, when I'm doing things like this, I, I'm fully aware of all the cameras around in every aspect, and McHugh and I have spent a lot of time, and it's also where to put the camera. How do you, how do you film these things? So it's not just something you can see on, on the internet, but that it's invests an audience in story. Thank you so much. I mean, that sounds absolutely incredible, and I'm very happy that wow. we are <laughs> uh, coming to the next uh, plot where you know that you've prepared a never-before-seen exclusive featurette to share with the Korean press today. Uh, it's a clip that's being shown for the first time in the world. So let's first take a look at the speed flying featurette, and then we will invite you back on stage to talk more. Sure. Thank you. Hello. Thank you all. Yeah, speed flying is fun. It's a great sport. Very elegant sport. <laughs> and very dangerous too, I assume? Yes, of course. <laughs> all right, so welcome. Uh, and Director uh, McQuarrie, it's so great to have you join us here. Um, I would like to ask, actually, to start by asking both of you. So you have worked on so many projects together over the years. Every film I've made for the past mm -hmm. 16 years. Every film, wow. That Every is... film, whether he's credited as a writer, you know, He's worked on every single film, right. both and of us together, and we spend a lot of time. Our lives are about waking up and talking about movies and stories, and it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful thing to do. That's wonderful, which is why I'm sure you refer to him as your creative brother, as I've seen yes, in your interviews. Yes, very much. Right. And so after all these years, I would like to hear, what is it that you enjoy so much about working with each other? Um, I would say probably the reason we work so well together is we both really care first and foremost about the audience's experience. That's really what it's about. Uh, we love movies, we love cinema, 
uh, and we just love entertaining an audience. How about you, Tom? Yeah, and we just have a lot of fun doing it. And it's something that we constantly are not taking any of this for granted, mm. that we're always thinking of that audience. And it's something that uh, we just see eye to eye with those things. And I just, I admire his, I, I admire his talent. I admire uh, him as, as a person, as an artist. And we have a lot of fun together creating. It's just, it's fun. And we, we, enjoy, uh, we enjoy the process together. Always learning. Always. We're always studying, always learning, always challenging ourselves. That's so inspiring. I've been to doing hear. this a while. So For a while, yes. You never know you never know at all, unfortunately. But fortunately. Wow. <laughs> um, and you know, being the creative brothers that you are, Chris, I would like to ask you, what goes through your mind when you are tasked with bringing one of the most dangerous stunts ever created to the big screen? Uh, bring Tom to Earth safely. That's pretty much it. And shoot it so it makes and, sense. Yes, and make sure it was <laughs> worth doing. Make sure it was worth doing. Um, and yeah. in the case of something like the skydiving, I'm just, I'm just staring at the crosshairs on the monitor and waiting to see his parachute. That's really the... That's, it's kind of an out-of-body experience. Mm. Do you ever get scared watching him do it? Uh, no, uh, it's, it's, we are so focused on, uh, on safety and execution and there are so many departments functioning together, uh, so, uh, so synchronously that you, you really don't have time to think about that. Plus we've been doing it a long time. So, uh, it's, that really doesn't enter into it. We, we have an expression we say all the time, don't be careful, be competent. But if you're thinking too much about what could go wrong, that's, that's where your focus is. Mm. So we're always focused on the positive, and we're focused on everything that could go right. Wow. But the pressure's there. I mean, the pressure's there in just making a movie anyway. And the pressure is absolutely there. It's not something that, as I said, we don't take it for granted. There is there's a relief when it's done. Mm. Yes. There's, a, there's a relief that we got it. And... Uh, and that it's captured on, on screen. So there's, there's pressure. There's a tremendous pressure and nerves. And when we're doing things, I like to keep things like, because very relaxed. So we always go to work together in the morning and we're talking about story. So it's never, we're just, we just treat each day just like another day of the pressure of making a movie. Mm -hmm. And so we also have another saying, which is pressure is a privilege. Wow. So, Look, in making any movie, there's just a tremendous amount of pressure, and we're, fi we're looking for our story, we're finding our story, um, and it's just day to day. And so that, there's, we just, and I also, I don't want him to worry about it. Mm. So I never tell him half the stuff. It's like... <laughs> I find out later. He I'm finds out later what happened, and I'm like, you don't need to know this stuff. Later we'll talk about it. It's all right. Don't worry. Oh, that's lovely. Um, switching gears a little bit, so there seems to be a lot of emotion and humor in this movie. Why was that important for the movie, Chris? Uh, to me, that is the that is the reason for making the movies. Uh, the the action and the stunts, all of the spectacle, they don't they don't matter if you're not invested in the characters, invested emotionally in the story, and that's really what it comes down to for for us. And it's humanity. We want a big screen adventure. We're looking at how cinema has developed. We're using all of our skills, me as an actor, as a producer, storyteller, you know, together, and all of our cast in a manner that is as entertaining as possible for the audience. So every film I've made from when, since I was 18 years old, and you kind of go, okay, now I'm going to use all of these skills, and I'm going to push into the next. How we're using motion on such a large scale, action on such a large scale, that's developing character. Mm. And when you have that kind of structure of tension, you can have humor and you can have great humor and great drama and you can have character development. So when you see, what's amazing to me is the scale of our chase in Rome. Just getting those locations that we have for brief moments and and to be able, when you look at the movie, they're playing in, in, a, in a two shot. We're not editing back and forth. This is, and you look at Haley and I, you look at that performance that is, 
It's right there on screen that's happening, and it's immediate. That's not green screen. It is practical action. It is live. It is immediate. And you're going to get that kind of character spontaneity that, that I like in movies, that it's not, it's unexpected. And those are the things that we're looking for. Great. You mentioned Rome. I want so humor. I want action. I want humor. I want, you know, you want people. I want everything. I want everything. Everything. <laughs> um, and you mentioned Rome, so which leads me to my next question. You shot all over the world for this movie. What location were you most excited to shoot in? Was it Rome for you, Tom? I have to say every location. We get excited about every single place we go. I, I love to travel. I love not just being a tourist, but I want to work in those environments. So we're scouting the cities. We get to see the world that... Uh, people don't get to see because also we're working elbow to elbow and shoulder to shoulder with local crews and we spend a lot of time educating those local crews on to how we make movies because the technology and the things that we're doing in these films you know I've studied films all the way back to the origins of, of cinema and and he and I've applied we've created knowledge and we've also studied old techniques and applied them so we want this art form to carry on. So when we're working with production companies, we're, we're, we're teaching them. And also, we get excited about going to these places. So we like to travel. His whole family likes to travel. So we're, we're very excited about all of them. Norway was spectacular. Rome was spectacular. Venice. Uh, Venice Abu Dhabi was, was amazing. Abu Dhabi. Well, these are places that we've always wanted to shoot and celebrate. So, and it has that that journey, uh, cinematic journey for an audience. I want them to feel like they've traveled and had an experience when they see these films. I'm sure that's what all of the audience is going to feel. So thank you so much to the both of you. Uh, and we've thank heard- Thank you, Haley. Thank you. And we've heard from director Christopher McQuarrie and Tom Cruise himself, the unstoppable masterminds of the mission series. And now it's time for us to meet the amazing cast that bring that dream to life. So please welcome the cast of Dead Reckoning Part 1, Haley Atwell, Simon Pegg, Vanessa Kirby, and Palm Clementia. This is a great cast. We're supposed to do the photos at the end. We went rogue. Yeah. That's, that's the nature of this team. They go rogue all the time. The more photos, the better. Thank you so much. Thank you all. All right. So thank you, everyone, and welcome to the stage and also to Korea. Uh, all right. So I'd just like to let you know that I will be asking the pre-prepared questions to everyone, and then we will give enough time to the floor for the press to ask questions directly. So I would like to start with you, Haley. Um, could you tell us? Her name's Haley also. Ah, yes. Haley, Haley. <laughs> Hi, Haley. Hello, Haley. Nice Great to name. meet you. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you, what is the best thing about being in a mission movie? That's such a big question. Um, where to, to, to begin? I think there is so much, um, it's so meticulous in its preparation and its study and its discipline and its focus. So you come onto a Mission Impossible set and you know, led by Tom and McHugh, it creates, sets this bar where everyone comes and they thrive. They 
are encouraged to collaborate and make creative choices and see what lands for the audience. So as well as it's as you know, beautifully planned out and prepared, there is a lot of, um, there's a lot of opportunity to try new things and always searching and finding the thing that we think the audience will love the most. So it's a, it's a, a wonderful feeling of collaboration. Mm. That's lovely, thank you. And I wanna ask you, Simon, um, this is your fifth mission outing. Could you tell us how Benji has evolved over the years? Uh, well, I mean, Benji started out as a sort of lab technician, you know, and uh, decided to join the field program and become a member of the IMF. And really, that's kind of when McHugh joined the family because um, he came on board as a writer in, in Ghost Protocol. So we've sort of, with Tom, been able to evolve the character together, which has been really fun. You know, he's gone from being a very enthusiastic little puppy of a guy to being a more sort of mature, capable agent. Um, he loves Ethan, obviously. Uh, you Ethan know. loves Benji. <laughs> Everyone loves Benji, right? Everyone loves Benji, right? Uh, but I think um, it's a real privilege as an actor to get to play a character many times and get to evolve, work on what's gone before. I try and always approach him to think, what's he just been through, and, and, and build on that. And I couldn't think of two more sort of brilliant creatives to, to do that with. So, yeah, he's grown up. We all have a lot of fun together working. I think that shows on and, screen. Yeah, and we admire, uh, you know, I just admire them tremendously. Each one is so uniquely talented, uh, and it's really fun to go every day. They constantly surprise us. We have a lot of fun. They're amazing. That's amazing to hear as well. Um, my next question is to you, Vanessa. And so this is your second mission film, and what do you love about the franchise? We'd love to hear. You know, for me... I just love that they're all real human beings. They're people that you feel you could bump into on the street or the people you know. And I think because of that, I've always admired what Tom does with, with Ethan is it feels like it could be any one of us. You know, somehow it's a man caught in something, trying to do the right thing, uh, stumbling along the way, flawed, um, and therefore is a, is, becomes a hero, I think, because of that, rather than being kind of supernaturally, you know... Um, inaccessible somehow and I think he's always encouraged all of us to play many things at one time so it's never this is you know this character and this character and this character they all are have vulnerabilities and weaknesses and um, therefore it becomes a performance piece really in the height of this huge movie and I don't know what else you could want as an actor that's lovely to hear um, and I want to ask you, Pong, and so, you know, you excitedly new, newly joined uh, the mission series, and how excited was it for you to step onto a mission movie set for the first time? Uh, I feel like a devil right now, <laughs> but I'm a villain, so it's great. Uh, um, it was so exciting. It's, it was one of my dreams, actually, to, uh, to be in Mission Impossible. And um, I remember um, I'm at an interview um, in London, they said, oh, um, how was it to work on Mission Impossible? And I said, it was a dream Tom true. I was like, oh, sorry, come true. But it sounds like the same Tom and come true. So that was my dream. I used to, um, I saw the first movie when I was, um, I don't, maybe 11, on a tiny screen in black and white. The TV was barely working. I was blown away by the movie. And it was my dream to be part of the franchise, so... Thank you, Tom and McHugh. Thank you. Thank you. You're amazing. <laughs> all of you all are. Oh, that's so beautiful to hear. You're amazing. Um, <laughs> the kind of work that you have to do to make these films, we, we sit down with everyone beforehand and go, this is how to make, this is how we make these films. And first of all, I don't, you know, I don't make a movie just to make a movie. And it takes a tremendous amount of discipline and dedication to be able to accomplish anything in life. And now we're going through and making a mission movie. It is physical. There's a lot. Of, there's a fun process of going through these things. And I have to say, when you when you see this talented group of artists and the dedication that they bring to their craft and to this film, we're I, I speak for McHugh and I. Every day we're just very grateful. And we'd go in the editing room and look at them. And I just look. I, I they're my friends. I admire them. So it was very special. Thank you for that. And Haley, we cannot not talk about that amazing, memorable car chase. So, and handcuffed to Tom in a Fiat at that, right? So, in the streets of Rome, what was that like to shoot? Could you share with us? Well, we nicknamed the car Trixie because 
quickly established she had a mind of her own and that she would respond to any slight adjustment of the wheel. Um, so I, I thought it was, it's such a funny setup, you know, that Ethan Hunt is undermined by a Fiat 500. That gives you a sense that tonally of this movie, there's going to be great levity to it. Um, we trained, or I trained, Tom's, in, you know, as we all know, such a, an accomplished athlete and stuntsman, and I had to learn how to drift. So I spent five months in the UK doing that. And it's a very different setup when you're learning the mechanics and the, the theory behind it on a racetrack in the UK, but then having to take it on location to somewhere like Rome, these cobbled streets, beautiful old buildings, surrounded by you know, many cast and crew, and the new level of obstacles that, that you come your way because of it, 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 it propels you into this hypervigilance of wanting to make sure that you're getting it, you're being precise and mechanical with what you're doing, but that, you've, that I've had the foundation of the training in me so I know I can do it safely. So I hope uh, it's fair to say I'm a, probably a more competent driver than Grace appears in the film. You, in order to portray a sense of recklessness, you can't be reckless as an actor. And so playing with that kind of paradox was, was so much fun. And then just being able to, you know, so much of that car chase sequence is in a two shot between Ethan and Grace. And so it's the, the, the wonderful challenge is to be present with each other in every single moment so that we are working very much together, despite that there are two characters who are at times totally exasperated by each other, but the pressure and the circumstance and the story has forced them together in a, in a small and, space. And you did an amazing job because we're, we're, the way McHugh and I work, we're looking at the performance, we're looking at our character and we're developing that character. So. When you're seeing these stunts, we might only have that road for 20 minutes. So we know as a producer, McHugh and I know we have this amount of time and we need the performance. We need her performance. So I'm... Right now. Right now. Like you have to deliver that performance right now. And we're playing and writing. So there's times where he'll give me a line and we'll throw it off like he'll be... So it's, you're looking at that for that spontaneity. It's... It's not just doing a stunt, you're acting as we're going along at high speed. So that kind of training that we do, you know, and I oversee all of their programs. Like I, I help build their programs to get them to a place where they're comfortable with me, you know, personally and as an actor and, and in, in the race car with me, in those cars, in these kinds of environment. We're there with other cars coming at us uh, and you have to also be very safe and so it takes a tremendous amount of concentration it's when people start to act and they're doing stunts that's where you know that's concentration and trust yes that's really that's really the thing i have, have you know to be in the car with somebody else driving while you're acting it, it takes an enormous amount of faith and trust you have to get the performance you have 20 minutes or 15 minutes or one more take yeah. and that's it and we, most of the time we're there is no preparing for it. We we watch the performance and say this line would be better, or try this as a as an idea. So much of what you're seeing is improvised. That's, I, I I feel like I'm getting out of breath just listening to you. Yeah, I mean, and when you're so seeing like <laughs> the thing about Haley in this car chase, and when McHugh and I we were casting Haley, she invites that kind of tone for Rome. So when you're we use motion as a an action as a compression for character development. So you're looking at how we're bringing these characters together and, and pulling them apart. And unless you're invested in the characters, I'm not interested in action unless I'm, is, unless I'm invested in the story and the characters. So that's all the time that we're looking. What story does it tell? What story does Haley bring? What story does, does, each, does each actor bring to it? Wow. Simon and Vanessa and, and Palm. Mm -hmm. So Simon, I actually want to ask you, speaking of these amazing stunts, can you tell us what does your face look like when Tom is doing one of his infamously amazing crazy stunts? Do you have to look away or how does that It's go? very pale usually. <laughs> uh, you know, I know Tom is diligent. I mean, when it comes to the preparation for these stunts, one thing Tom is not is reckless. He's incredibly um, careful. Um, and so I know that every single thing has been covered in the build-up to the stunt. I know that this is the safest place to do this. I know he's got the best people around him. He will generally train to be the best in the world at what he has to do before he does it. 
So all of that is, is there when, when we're doing those stunts. There is always the possibility of an unknown thing. That's always going to be hovering there. So yes, we do get very nervous. And I remember the, the day that the, um, Tom uh, rode off the cliff. Um, it, it, we were terrified. <laughs> And there's a, I've got a video of it on my phone, which I've been told I'm allowed to post after the film comes out. And I'm standing with, with Haley Palm and Tarzan, and uh, Tom goes off, and there's this big silence, and then we hear he's okay. And then we all just burst out laughing, but the laughter is incredibly hysterical and nervous. Like, you can tell how relieved we are that everything's okay. But as I, I never say, saw that video. I, don't, I never saw that. I'll show it to you. I've got it on my yeah, phone. I'll show yeah, you I've later. But also, he did it like seven times in a row, I think, or eight times in yeah. a row. <laughs> yeah. By the yeah. end, time, it's just like, oh, whatever. It was, like, yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Oh, I remember the first times I was, but look, every time I did it. I'm we kept, all remember the first time. Yes. But, and as you're going, I never, you can't get casual about it. You just have to keep focused because, yeah, it gets, it's intense. Mm, we're all going to be wearing very diligently for that video. Um, and Vanessa, I would like to ask you, so you also do a lot of intense physical action in this film as well. Were they fun to film? And also, how do you train for those scenes? Yeah, I remember I'd um, never been around a lot of stunts. And I knew that on Fallout, the last movie, um, I trained. I loved it. I'd never, ever understood physicality in my body before. Um, and it's a gift of doing these movies that it just requires you to, um, to have that relationship with yourself, which is a lifelong gift as well. I always say to Tom, it's changed my life. Um, but I remember in that first fight that I watched Tom do, I realized it's, it's, it's not stunts, it's kind of, it's balletic. It's, 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 it's ballet in some ways. It's, it's an art form. It's not, you know, pulling off some tough guy action stuff it's it's dancing and um i very because you don't make contact but you have to look like you're making contact and that's athleticism um of a sort of balletic nature in a way that i'd never experienced and then i um doing that stunt with tom i realized i was working with the master of it and but i have to tell you what you, the moment that you came up with in fallout i love this moment we're fighting in the club this is in fallout and we're in the middle of this action and, you know, the whole way we designed it was Ethan's doing the action and suddenly Vanessa, the White Widow, surprises and she can take care of herself. And yeah. you see that evolution, the character that you think she's letting Ethan help her and then she saves Ethan and she just looks at him. And you have this look and you did it. You were just, you're, you just embodied it. Your physicality is amazing. I, I had no idea that you weren't an athlete or you didn't feel that kind of thing because you were so natural. And she gives us this look, and the Q and I were like, that look and fallout where she's just looking at, at Ethan like, isn't this fun? We're like, oh my gosh. We were just, we were around that video monitor afterwards. We we're like, this is, what, a, what an actress to be able to. That was the character in it's, one yeah, look. Yeah, and it's, we're always looking for motion that defines character. And we want the actors, we're studying the actors, we're studying the way they move, that it's not just mechanical, it's not just, you want their personalities to come through, that they feel so confident in emotion, and you want that character to come alive. And that's what we're always looking for, like, when's this, when's, where's it, where is it? Where's that lightning in a bottle? And you created that moment, and still to this day, I'll never forget, oh, you, McHugh, he says, come here, he calls me over, he's like, did you see that? Did you see? I said, yes, I saw that moment, it's amazing, where she just looks at him. That's the stuff that we're looking for, that, that kind of, those moments that we're looking for. So like thank that. you, No. Thank you, Tom. I don't know if I told you this, but I was always last in the running race at school, and I, now I don't think I would be, thanks to you. <laughs> like, quite cool. I've made it, I'm cool. Beautiful. And I remember that look. That was the moment I think we all kind of fell in love with that character. I know. It yeah. is. It is the moment you're going, oh my, and that's exactly it. That, what's amazing in cinema is when you have brilliant actors like these guys, the moments that they create, you know, like Simon Pegg, he can have the emotion that he brings underneath, always with, uh, from the beginning, and I know you say he was just, Always from the beginning, I admired his work from Shaun of the Dead when he said he wanted to make Mission, I was so happy. That he has a pathos underneath that I'm in, he's a real person. I'm invested in that character. He's, he's me, you know, in the audience. So I just really... And there's always great drama 
in, in, amid, in, in the midst of that. There's Always. great emotion in the midst of he that. He can play it's drama a and comedy and character stuff. That's that that range is just always amazes me, and it's fun. It just and he just brings it. Like you should see him on set. It's just like boom, boom, boom. Are you blushing? <laughs> it's true though, it's Simon. Hard. Simon, he just brings it in a manner. This that is to make up for being pale. Yeah. <laughs> This is the, the, the other color Tom makes me is red. <laughs> it's true. I love that. Thank you Thank so you much for that. Um, and I want to ask you, Palm, I, you know, do you ever feel like you're fully prepared to be a part of a mission series? Did you know what you were getting into is what I'm asking. <laughs> Great question. Great question, um, Haley, Palm. You have to be Anyone? ready for the impossible. You have to be ready to just jump and go for it. So, but again, there is so much training behind it. Yeah. And actually, I know, I know you love when I, when I say that story, but I was even like training before getting cast in the movie because it was my dream to be in Mission Impossible. I love this story. So I, I would train martial arts with a martial artist called Jessa Noviello, and he taught me how to punch, how to kick, and sometimes even in my schedule, instead of writing uh, martial arts training or stunt training in my phone, in my schedule, I would write Mission Impossible because I wanted to manifest it. And then it happened. And then I got to do this fight scene with Tom, which was... I mean, I don't know how I can top doing a fight scene with Tom Cruise in, a, in an action movie, you know? So... Do, a, do another one. I know. Yes. And I, I must say to everyone, this is, this is how you do it, okay? When I was a kid, I'd write goals on my wall. And I'd write a goal. And then I would figure out what do I have to do to attain that goal? What steps do I need to do? And it's very inspiring. And Palm did not tell us this story. For a couple of no, years. I, I don't want to sound like a freak or a stalker. Palm, you're not a freak or a stalker <laughs> because I admire I just, you. you know, I train hard. I was like, I'm ready. She trained so hard and then she auditions and didn't tell us and has created this incredible character. But that, it's inspiring because that's what she did and she created, she created it. She made this happen for herself to be in Mission Impossible. You have to put it out there. And what you do is she's trained for it and if you build it, they will come. So she trained for it and she made it happen. I think it's it's very inspiring story and she works so hard and you were amazing with that. Like you see what Palm does, all the moments of this movie, they weren't written. Her doing the heart on the glass, okay? The whole makeup that she has in the club. The characters, like each one of these actors just keeps creating those moments that that I want audiences to know that is the stuff that and what I admire about Christopher McQuarrie, the first time that I worked with him, he sees actors and he can write for actors. He's not just writing a script and trying to fit, bless you, bless you. <laughs> I know someone's sneezing, bless you. That someone is fitting into that, into that performance. He understands that film is live. It's, it has a life and you have to be willing to change something if it's not working and you have to be willing to to celebrate the actors that you're working with. And if you look at the oranges, origins, origins of cinema, you had these great actors and they, they wrote for them. They, they delivered them to an audience in a manner that is cinematic, that is visual storytelling. And he understands that and he appreciates that. And that is my, that is my school of cinema. That's how I learned how to do it. But I, I just really admire that poem. And I, Thank you. it's inspiring, and it's it is the way to to do things. You have to do it. Right. Do you mind? You inspire I... us always, you know. And we have to even like do it better, you know. We have to be at the top of our game when we're with you. So you know, it's infectious. And, and you know, it, and it was an honor. You're the, you are. I love doing our fight together. Okay? So much fun. I love. It was so. It was. It was, it was very, very hard and very It was a very tough fight in that yes. small thing. It was very tight and very tough, and. Every day, that fight was, uh, what she did was extraordinary. That's amazing. Yeah. And New, do you mind me telling the story about Vanessa Redgrave? Please. Do you yeah, mind? Please. I love these stories. Do you all mind? Do you have a minute? Oh, Can I tell course. this? Go now? ahead. Do you mind? So these are the things that, you know, we don't hear till later. And it's like Haley's an actress that we've been watching for many years and we wanted to work with her. And now we're working with New also, enormously talented. And she tells us this story. And that her, she was, had a namesake, was Vanessa Redgrave. And Vanessa Redgrave was in Mission One, an actress that I greatly admire. And so it was an inspiration for her to become an actress. She always wanted to become an actress. There's Vanessa, Vanessa Redgrave. So now she's making Mission, and when you're 12 years old, you see her in theater. 
and you tell Vanessa Redgrave that you want to be an actress. And Vanessa Redgrave says, and you will be. Is that what she said? It's so beautiful. Twelve years old. She goes backstage in England. Says, and now, all these years later, she makes Mission Impossible. And Vanessa is Vanessa Redgrave's, playing Vanessa Redgrave's daughter in the film that McHugh came up with while we were shooting the film. In post. In post, you came up with yeah. it. In post-production. So I just, I love these kinds of stories. That here is this brilliant actress who inspired by you know, the older generation, and look what they've accomplished. So, just thought you all would enjoy these little tidbits of, we love of mission knowledge. Thank you. Thank you so much for those stories. Um, and now we are going to open the floor for questions. So, please raise your hand if you'd like to ask a question, and the team will have the mic delivered to you. Um, the questions from the floor will then be consecutively interpreted by me on stage. So we want to ask you that you ask the questions in Korean only so that we don't mix up the interpretation flow. Um, we also kindly ask that you limit yourself to one question so that we can hear from the most of you. Um, all right, so first question. Here? Yes, thank you. 네, 안녕하세요. 저 MBA. I'm sorry, I don't see you. Over there to the left. I'm sorry. Right there. Oh, hello. Yes. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Munyoung Kim from MBN. Uh, 질문 좀 드리겠습니다. 노르웨이 절벽에서 모터사이클을 타고 가시다가 그 상태로 뛰어내리시는 장면을 보여주셨는데 메이킹 영상에도 나왔고요. 모터사이클을 실제로 탄 상태로 정말 그 위치에서 떨어지신 건지 궁금합니다. 왜냐면 저희 부모님께서도 예고편 보시고 진짜 이걸 했을 리가 있냐라고 하셨거든요. 그래서 구체적인 훈련 기간이 어떻게 되셨는지 그런 열정은 어떻게 나오시고 그리고 스턴트 없이 직접 하시는 연기가 또 다른 것이 어떤 것들이 있는지 조금 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. All right, so this question's to you, Tom. We see you on screen jumping off a motorcycle in the Norway cliff. Now, we've seen it uh, behind the scenes, real and everything, but did you really, literally, physically, were you on that motorcycle jumping off that cliff? And I ask you, because my parents, when they saw the trailer, they were like, hey, no way, that, that can't be true. <laughs> and so I want to ask you specifically how long it took for you to prepare, how long the training part was, and what motivates you, what you know, gives you that passion? Yes, that absolutely is me. Every frame. Um, I can prove it if you want to look at my phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, every frame. And it's, it's, uh, I always wanted, it's my passion for storytelling. It is my passion for life, for adventure, for entertaining an audience. Um, all of those things in combination that I just put into it. And I have dedicated my life to this art form. And, so that is my passion. Uh, and the training, look, I've been skydiving for many, many, many years. And I've been riding motorcycles since I was a little kid. So I'm constantly training on things to put into movies. And so for this final, the final training was, I don't know, five months? Maybe that, something like that. But it was, but it's also the years ahead. It took. You know, had I not done all of the years beforehand, all the training that I do, and I go skydiving and ride a lot of motorcycles on race tracks and all of my movies, um, yeah. So it's it's accumulation of my lifetime of of work, and I'm I'm someone who I'm constantly, even if I'm not doing stunts, you have to be very fit to make these movies, to make any kind of film. You have to have a physic uh, an, an endurance because the hours are long. Um, I'm usually producing the films, or I'm, at the very least, I'm just responsible for it because, you know, people are making it because of me, and uh, I have to be prepared and ready. There's a lot of responsibility. Thank you for that. Uh, next question. Not seeing. Oh, right there. Again, to the oh. left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 안녕하십니까. SR 타임즈 심우진 기자입니다. Thank you for it. I'm sorry. I don't know where. Oh, hello. How are you? Nice to see Hi. you. Hey. Hey. SR 타임즈 심우진 기자입니다. 영화 굉장히 재밌게 잘 봤고요. 그 모든 분들에게 공통적으로 질문을 좀 드리겠습니다. 예, 관객분들이 이 시리즈를 전체적으로 보실 분들이나 보시지 않으신 분들이나 
이 영화를 봤을 때 식상함을 느끼지 않고 오직 극장에서만 독점적으로 경험할 수 있는 영화를 어, 위해서 만들고 또 연기하시는 부분 이런 부분들에 대해서 공을 들이신 부분 이 어떤 부분인지를 어, 좀 답변 부탁드리겠습니다. So I want to say firstly, I greatly enjoyed the film, um, and I want to ask everyone and anyone who would like to answer. And so it seems that you put in so much dedication and focus into creating a movie where you don't have to be familiar to the franchise. You, you know, this can be the first of the mission films that you watch, and still it'll be just as exciting and riveting. And I feel like you also put in a lot of effort to making it fit for the big screen experience. Can you tell us a little bit about what the, some of the priorities or level, uh, areas of focus were in making that happen? I think in, 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 thank you for saying that because that has been the focus for us. You know, when we look at, I love making movies for the big screen. I understand that there are, uh, the cousins are streaming and television, but the first thing I want to create is for distribution and for audiences is that big screen experience and applying all the skills that we have to it. We're creating knowledge in terms of the cameras, the locations. The whole purpose of that is to, is for the big screen. And when, when an audience sees this, and it is a movie, it is a different experience seeing it as a community to, to share an experience together with an audience. And we go, to, we go to the theaters and we see it. Get my popcorn, sit down, and I want, I want to be there with an audience experience. The amount of effort that we put into visually, into the sound, into the story, so that an audience doesn't have to have seen all the other missions. If they want to see all the other missions, they'll get maybe even more out of it, but it's going to be a visual, exciting experience without that. And that has been a very strong focus of ours, but the mix, the music, the sound, the big screen, it's very, it's always in our minds. And I've been someone, look, I made far and away when I was pushing the large screen format back in the 1980s uh, with 65 millimeter and had that camera built and developed because I wanted, I wanted this kind of screen always for an audience. Seeing it on an iPhone, on a TV, that has its place, but this is first and foremost the most, this is why these films were made and I encourage an audience to go, you're going to have an experience. And McHugh? Seeing it with an audience. Yes. It's just a very different experience Seeing a movie in a theater with 500 strangers than it is watching it at home and, and feeling it with a community, a shared experience, is really something we believe in. Yeah, and today in this world where we're, people are on their devices and there's a separation, I think it's even more important today that we're watching movies in a cinema together as a community. You know, going to live events, uh, coming out of everything that we've all been through, I want those experiences. I love people. <laughs> I love people and I love people from all cultures and walks of life and the beauty of seeing live performance or the beauty of cinema is that we can all sit there together and have our different viewpoints and share a community experience. And I, I think it's, it's one of the great joys in life for me. And I know McHugh feels the same way with that. Very much. Thank you. Uh, next question. Back there. Yes. Right there. 아, 네, 안녕하세요. 문화일보 이정호 기자입니다. 그톰 크루즈 아저 삼촌 께 여쭤보고 싶은데요. 그 아무리 준비를 철저히 해도 스턴트 연기가 상당히 위험해 보이는데. 그 스턴트 연기를 하기 전에 좀 특별한 루틴이 있는지 뭐저 같은 경우에는 신한테 기도라도 할것 같은데 좀 사전에 뭘 해야 되는, 하는 하는 게 있는지 궁금하고요. 그리고 이제 좀 겁이 없어 보이는데 특별히 무서운 게 있으신지 궁금합니다. So I want to and he referred to you as Uncle Tom. So I would like to ask you Uncle Tom. Um, you know Thank you for that. I really that's so that's lovely. That's so beautiful. Thank you. You know, when it comes to these stunts, I mean, no matter how much you have prepared and you have decades of prepa uh, you know, preparation, it feels like one cannot be, you know, fully unscared. So are there any rituals that you like to go through? Because I feel like even maybe a slight prayer will help. Yes, let me make this clear. It's not that I'm not scared, okay? I don't mind being scared. It's not, it's, it's a, I don't mind feeling that, that, and I like to confront 
like I don't mind that. I don't. I. I don't. I want to confront it, and I. Um, there are things that I just I prepare and I prepare and I prepare, and then it's just very calm. I like things very calm. You know, there are things that. Uh, there's no real ritual. I'll get up and usually have a very good breakfast. You know, the morning, the morning of the jump. I, I remember the weather was not good for a couple of days, and it was uh, the pressure was building with the whole crew because that was the first day of shooting. Do you remember that? And the pressure. Oh yeah. It was it was just building because every day I go to bed and we're looking at the weather. Everything's very weather dependent because it's practical action. Whether I'm driving a car with with Haley in it or jumping off a cliff, if it's slick, or the temperatures aren't right, there's a lot of things to think about. The tire temperatures. And when we got up in the morning, there was ice on the ramp, and they're cleaning the ramp. And so I, I, what I like to do is I walk the ramp. I look at every, you know, even before I'm doing a, a stunt, I'll walk around with the cars, you know, before we were in that yellow car when I'm driving Haley, I'll walk around, I'll look at all the, I'll look at everything, I'll look at the store, I'll look at people, I'll make sure that I'm, you know, that everyone's gonna be safe, meaning no one's gonna be coming out of the stores, that, you know, that the lockups are there. I personally walk every, asp every part of the road before we do things. And the same with the ramp, I, we got up, he and I walked the ramp together, uh, it was very calm. We're looking at the light. We showed up when it was dark, and then basically I we ate, and then I you see me in that I have to jump into the bowl beforehand because I'm testing the wind, and I like to keep things just very relaxed, and I just go through the same steps that I do every single day. But it's not that I don't feel nervous or I don't feel that fear. I do. I just don't mind it, and I. I just always make sure that I'm just very methodical as I'm going through things, thinking about the movie, thinking about performance, and thinking about, because I also, I have to be spatially aware um, where I'm not inside, I'm, I'm outside. My, my view and my, my perceptions are outside because I have to know where that helicopter is. There's a drone, I know where the crew is. And I'm, I, I like to get to that place where I'm just very calm, very relaxed, uh, even under the pressure. Even when I have to act like I'm not relaxed or I'm tense inside of that car with Haley, she'll see me. I'll be like, I'm, you see what he, Ethan's doing, but in between, I'm watching her as we're, as we're doing things and making sure that, you know, because he and I will go and talk about performance afterwards. So I'm watching her and I'm acting also. So I'm both acting and watching her and... Also, I'm setting camera angles so that when I'm going off, I know where that helicopter is. I know the lens that the helicopter has. And I've I spent my life studying lenses and knowing what it's going to capture. And he and I are constantly, you know, in communication about story. So those are the things that I, that I think about. And it's, it's very much story. There was a second part to the question. You partly answered it, but you seem like a man with no fears. Is there anything you're scared of, I think, aside from stunts, maybe? Well, I think it's, it's something that I don't, I don't feel, I've never been not, I've never not done something because I'm afraid. If anything, I go, why am I afraid? And I look, I look as a human being to confront it, to I look. I'm someone who, You'll hear me, and they'll, oh, they'll hear me. I'm like, look, don't think, please look. You know, if you look at Top Gun Maverick, it's like, don't think, do. It's important to look. Don't just think about things. You have to look. Uh, so that is what I do, and I find that when I start exploring my, my interest in life, my interest in people, my interest in, in the environment, is always comes from not being internal, it's, it's looking and evaluating things myself. So, so it's not like I don't have these feelings, but, I'm, but I know when I'm feeling that, it's like I, I look, if that makes sense. It does make sense, and very inspiring too, thank you. Next question. Back there again, yes. 안녕하세요. Hello, how are you? Okay, 네, Hong Sang입니다. Hello, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. 
음, 탐과 다른 모두 배우, 배우들에게 여쭤보겠는데요. 먼저 탐에게는 11번째 방안이고 오실 때마다 많은 한국 팬들이 기다리고 있습니다. 혹시 톰 아저씨라는 친절한 톰 아저씨라는 별명을 알고 계시는지 궁금하고 아, 그 다음에는 아, 한국 팬들이 어, 탐에게 어떤 존재인지 어떤 영감을 주는지 알고 싶습니다. 그리고 다른 배우들도 이번에 한국을 방한해 한국 팬들을 만난 소감을 들어보고 싶습니다. So this question I want to ask everyone, um, and for Tom as well, you know, you, you visited Korea, this is your 11th visit to Korea, you. and you. we want to ask, uh, you know, do, are you aware that Korean fans have this loving, uh, endearing nickname for you, the kind Uncle Tom? You aware of that? that. <laughs> I love that. It's, I'm very honored to have that. That's, That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, and so I'd like to ask you, you know, what, does, what do Korean fans mean to you and, you know, how do they inspire you? And I would also like to uh, ask everyone, uh, what has your visit to Korea, I know it's been short until now, but what, does that, what has that meant to you and how do you feel about visiting Korea with this movie? I love Korea and McHugh and I, when we were there, it's like I, I, the places I grew up and I, I always moved around as a kid in America and Canada, uh, those are the places that I grew up, I dreamed of coming here. It was my dream to be able to come to this, to this country, to travel the world, to, you know, study the history, to, to not just be a tourist, but to be part of a culture, to experience it in that manner. That is, that is who I am as a person, and it means, it means everything to me, the welcome that I get. And we were there the other night, and we just came out of, out of a, you know, Korean barbecue, which I absolutely love, you know, amazing food. Uh, amazing culture and we just stood on the street and I just want to it was like because we're very busy we're working and we're, we're also preparing the next film and we've shot some of it but I love coming here and just taking a moment and and I'm in the street and I'm saying hello to people and people that love movies that you know love their country uh, are also very interested in, in, in our culture and they're sharing it with me I have wonderful conversations we met you know, a wonderful editor from another country. So that is the joy of life. The joy of life is to be able to, and I feel very privileged to travel around. It gives you, there's a, there's a, there's a differences and common elements that we all feel as human beings. And I was very curious as a child as to what is it like? What is it like in Korea? What are the people like? Will they laugh at the same things that I laugh at? Do they love the same way that I love? And I found that commonality of humanity. And it's a very beautiful thing. And cinema has allowed me to be able to tell stories. And I've seen films in, in, in your all's culture, from your culture, and to be able to share, to share that here. And to sit in this theater, this very theater that we go, and we're going to sit through the film tonight. We're going to watch the movie with the audience and experience that. Um, it means a great deal to me. Sorry for the long answer, but it, this is, it means a great deal to me to be here. McHugh? Thank you. I, I imagine this has been my fifth or sixth trip to Korea. I think we were notified that it's your fifth. It's my fifth? Yes. Okay, good. I'm glad, I'm glad somebody was there to come. Uh, but uh, it's, it's always different and it's always the same. And the, 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 the thing I love most about it is the people. And the greeting we receive from the moment we get off the plane. That was beautiful. Until the I moment we I did not expect that. No, it's just, it's, it, and you never know what to expect, but it's always lovely and so gracious and so kind. And the enthusiasm from, from the people in Korea is, is just so wonderful and it's, it's very reaffirming. Uh, it, it's, it's just, it's very life affirming coming to Korea. Thank you for that. And I know that for some members of the cast, it's your very first time visiting Korea. Could we hear from you too, Vanessa and Haley? It's your all's first time. Seven. First time. And I've wanted to come here for so long. I'm a we huge talked fan. about it when we were filming. That's right. We're coming here. We're coming here. And, and th these movies exist for an audience. And like Tom was saying, to be able to take these globally, it's such a privilege as the, the natural byproduct of that to experience just the warmth and the kindness and the generosity of people. And I, I arrived just yesterday, and from the people that I've met, the immediate sense of sort of kindness and hospitality. Um, I was at the gym this morning, and I was walking to my room, and this lovely lady ran out of the gym, and she came up to me, very polite, 
just saying, you know, how happy it, it made her that we were we were here, and just the, um, you know, to have to have to, to hear that is such a, a welcoming, a sense of kind of hoping that our work can belong here for you, as well as as of all the places that we get to travel. Um, and I love the food so much; <laughs> it's delicious. Um, so I'll be hopefully eating a few more meals before we leave. <laughs> yes, we will. Yes, yes we will. <laughs> Please do. Uh, this is my third time <clears throat> in Korea, and I, I love coming here so much. Um, the fans are wonderful. They buy me presents and wrap them exquisitely. And you love a good present, don't you, son? I love a present. I have to have it shipped back. They're called the Pegsters. They call themselves the Radical Korean Pegsters, and they're a, a group of fans, and they meet me every time. But I'm a massive fan of Korean culture myself. Uh, I've long been a fan of Korean cinema. My, three of my favorite horror movies are from here. Train to Busan, The Host, and I Saw the Devil. And my daughter and I watch Korean drama on Netflix all the time. So we watched uh, Crash Landing on You and Vincenzo and Squid Game, obviously, uh, uh, Strangers from Hell, 25, 20, I could go on. We've watched so many. My daughter is a big fan of Lee Dong-wook, huh? who she thinks is dreamy. Um, I'm very happy to hear that. I am a big fan of Kim Tae-ri, got to say. Uh, but so, uh, for, for all your entertainment that you've given me, because uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful stuff. You're an incredibly um, inventive and imaginative, creative group, and I, uh, I really respect you and, and, and love. So more, please, more. Oh, and I took my daughter to see BTS in, uh, in Las Vegas, and we met the boys, and um, it was very exciting. I, I was, I'm army. Oh. Wow, thank you so much for that. You're going to need a bigger plane to carry back all your gifts now. <laughs> all right, thank you so much, um, Vanessa. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you, yes. Sorry. Um, um, well, no, I got presents at the airport, which I've never had in my life before. So that is just such a testament to the welcome and the warmth of the Korean people. Um, I also grew up on Korean cinema, and so it's just been a big dream of mine to come. And as even as I was landing, I was looking out, I was like, I can't believe that I was here for the first time. Um, so it's such a pleasure to be here as part of the Mission Impossible family. Um, and also, what I've really noticed is the pride in the country and the pride in the culture. I think that's such a good example, to be so proud to be from where you belong. It makes me want to be proud of from where I'm from, and actually, it's remarkable how you feel that from every single person, and that, to me, is a beautiful sort of belonging and home feeling, and I think that then means that you guys welcome visitors so extraordinarily because you want to show us your home and so it feels like we're coming to a home um, so that's a beautiful thing that's lovely and Palm please we know you know how much we love you here oh thank you I love you yes. too uh, I've been here a few times uh, to promote different movies and also on vacation um, I came when I was little but I don't really remember my mother was Korean she raised me just for a few years and she called me Palm because she said that um, I don't speak Korean. She said that pom means spring and bomb means tiger. And I, I'm born in spring and my Chinese sign is tiger. And I think it reflects my personality too. It absolutely does. <laughs> spring like it, we and can all testify to ah, that. Tiger. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm a huge fan of Korean cinema as well. Um, Old Boy by Park Chan Wook is one of the movies that made me want, want to become an actress. And I love Bong Joon Ho movies too. Uh, sorry for the pronunciation. Um, yes, I'm very, very happy to be back here. That's lovely. Thank you so much. Um, so, yes, we're going to take another question. 네, 안녕하세요. 저는 그 이대일의 유준아 기자인데요. 어, 일단 감독님이랑 이제 탐 크루즈 배우님이 만드신 영화 재미있게 너무 잘 봤고요. 매 시리즈마다 늘 이렇게 엔터테인먼트를 선사해 주시는데. 혹시 이 시리즈 결말에 대해서 생각해 주신 게 있으신지 이 시리즈가 나중에는 또 에단 헌트가 우주에서도 액션을 하게 되는 날이 오는지 궁금해서 여쭤봅니다. Uh, I first want to thank you for this amazing entertainment that you have brought to us. My question goes to you, uh, Chris. So, you know, you bring us such great joy and cinema magic every time. Have you thought about how the series is going to end? Is that all in your head? Because I feel like at this rate, we might even see some crazy stunts done in outer space. Um, considering who I work with, one way or another, uh, I will probably end up in space, like it or not. 
on um, the moon. Uh, as far as how the series ends, I, I usually go to work not knowing how the day will end. Um, we, 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 it's very true. We, we have a plan. We have a direction. We, 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 we definitely have a place that we think we're going to. But when you're working with a cast like this, it's always a process of discovery, and we never let the plan get in the way of a better idea. Uh, so most days I come home surprised and throwing out tomorrow's plan because of what we did today. So I really, even if I had a plan for how the franchise would end, I, I, I can't promise you that that's where we would end up. Wow. All right. Thank you for that. And due to time constraints, we're going to have to take one last question. I see that the last question will come from the, uh, over there, up left. Oh, oh. Is that a penguin? I see. Oh, friend, I don't, oh, oh. I Hello. See. I'm sorry. Hello, where, I'm where, where? Peng Su. I'm from Antarctica. Way back. Way back? I'm honored yes. to left. meet you. Oh, yes. Hello. How are you? Yes. Hello. Uh, I'm Penguin. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. And you? I'm very well. Very, very happy. Oh, thank, thank you. I love you. I love oh, you too. Oh. <laughs> 질문 드리겠습니다. 톰 크루즈 배우님. 배우님은 지금까지 다양한 장소에서 엄청난 스턴트를 보여주셨는데요. 특히나 이번 작품에서는 노르웨이 낙하 장면이 정말이지 경이로웠습니다. 그렇지만 배우님의 팬으로서 혹시 다치지는 않으실까 걱정되는 것도 사실입니다. 또 그렇지만 계속해서 배우님의 스턴트를 보고 싶은 것도 사실이고 이 시리즈가 영원히 끝나지 않았으면 좋겠습니다. 그래서 혹시 배우님은 도전하고 싶으신 스턴트가 또 있으신지 그리고 언젠가 제 고향인 남극에서 배경으로 한 스턴트를 기대해도 좋을지 궁금합니다. Thank you. So the question is to you, Tom. You are my favorite actor. I love you. And uh, it is amazing how many stunts you have shown us. And in this particular film, The Fall in Norway, it was just astonishing, to say the least. As your biggest fan, I worry about you getting hurt, but also want you to do more stunts. So, you know, I never want the mission series to end. I have a question for you that is, are you planning to do any more stunts that you haven't done before that you want to do in the future? And also, will you ever come to my homeland the South Pole to do some more stunts? Well, uh, I can answer some of that. Um, I could tell you he's already done something crazier than what you've seen. Uh, something crazier after that is coming. And we were just on the North Pole. Um, so we were on the North. Do you ever visit the North Pole? Oh. Do you ever go to the North Pole? It's way too far, sir. I haven't stepped foot in the North Pole. Oh, okay. Well, we shot the North. We'll have to shoot in we the South. We have to go, yes. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Uh, wow. So, on that note, with a very thank excited you. penguin, um, thank you all for your questions. I want to thank you all for having us, and thank you for your questions. Thank you for being here today. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Uh, thank you. And actually, I was going to ask for all of your last comments to the Korean press before we wrap up. So please go ahead. Just thank you. It's a privilege to be here. Uh, I love coming. I, we talk about it when we're making the film. So I'm just enjoying every moment uh, tonight. We're going to show up early for the red carpet tonight and just have, have a wonderful, fun, cinematic evening. And this is a full cinema day. So I, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your kindness and your generosity to me always and to the whole cast. Uh, we love you and we have great respect for your culture, for your art, and thank you very much. Uh, I've been here many times. It, it's never enough times. It's never long enough. Uh, it's just lovely to be back in Korea and we're very excited for everyone to see the film tonight. It's my first time here. I hope I get to come back and spend a bit more time getting to know the people and the culture and eating lots of that amazing food. Um, thank you so much for being part of this whole journey for all of us. And it's so, it's so wonderful to have been working on a movie for the, almost four years now, and it's, it's finally ready to delight you all. So I hope you come back to the cinema and see it many times. This is always a highlight. Seoul is always a highlight of the press tour. I look forward to it so much. 
Um, as I said, I'm such a fan of Korea, and um, it's just a privilege to be here. So to you all and to the uh, radical Korean pegsters, <laughs> Sangeo. It's such a pleasure to be here, my first ever time. Um, definitely going to come back. I really want to bring my family already. Um, I hope you love the movie. It astonished me when I saw it for the first time, 10 days ago. It's true, it was four years ago that we started. Um, so it feels like a very special part of us that we get to share, and you guys have made it even more special for us, so thank you so much. Uh, I can't wait for you all, for all the Korean fans to see the movie, and I just have one um, question. Do you know a good place to sing karaoke in Seoul? <laughs> We're gonna have to get back to you with an thank address. Thank you. <laughs> So um, we want to thank you all so very much. Thank you, Haley. And Great we are job. now. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to now ask you to leave the stage, and then we will have you back for photos when the stage is ready. Thank you. <laughs>